Hi everyone. In today's video, we will be diving deep into the differences between CVD graphene and graphene oxide, which are the two most common graphene materials available today. Yes, you heard me correctly, I said graphene materials. Contrary to popular belief, graphene is not one material, but really a family of nanomaterials which are all based on carbon. So let's begin by talking about some carbon allotropes, or quite simply, types of carbon. Carbon exists in various forms, such as diamond, graphite, and amorphous carbon, to name a few. The interesting thing about these various forms of carbon is that while they are all based on the same element, each of them have very different properties and applications from one another. So where does graphene fit in this picture? Quite simply, the easiest way to think of graphene is that it is a single atom thick sheet of graphite, thereby making it an allotrope or type of graphite. Going back to the notion that graphene is not one material, within graphene there are several distinct types such as CVD graphene, graphene oxide, reduced graphene oxide, and few layer graphene. And just like the various forms of carbon, each of these graphene materials have a different set of properties and applications from one another. So to recap, we start with carbon and go down to graphite, which is a type of carbon. And from there, we move on to graphene, which as we said earlier, is technically a single atom thick sheet of graphite. And then finally, we identify the distinct types of graphene, all of which operate very differently from one another. The biggest takeaway from all this is that each of the materials you see on your screen work very differently from one another, despite all of them being based on the same element, which is carbon. Now we mentioned at the beginning of the video that CVD graphene and graphene oxide are the most common types of graphene available today. So let's go ahead and describe some of the differences between these two materials, starting with how they are made. CVD graphene is produced using what is called a bottom-up process. And the technical term for it is chemical vapor deposition, which is where CVD graphene gets its name from. Chemical vapor deposition takes place in a high temperature inert environment, and the output of this process is a continuous two-dimensional thin film deposition, which takes place directly on the surface of a catalyst material. Briefly describing the chemical vapor deposition process, it begins with the introduction of a carbon precursor gas into the high temperature inert environment. And in this environment, the carbon contents of the precursor gas begin to separate and start forming islands of single atom thick carbon growth, which takes place directly on the surface of the catalyst material. Eventually, these islands of single atom thick carbon growth merge to give a continuous thin film of chemical vapor deposition graphene deposited directly on the surface of the catalyst material. Now, when we compare the production process for graphene oxide, it looks very different to CVD graphene. Graphene oxide is produced using what is called a top-down process. The most common process used is the chemical exfoliation of graphite. In this process, graphite is first oxidized to give graphite oxide, which goes through an exfoliation process to ultimately give graphene oxide. Now, in order to get slightly improved quality, graphene oxide may undergo an additional reduction step which gives us reduced graphene oxide, which is of a higher quality compared to traditional graphene oxide. Now that we've described how these materials are made, let's dive deeper into the properties and applications of these materials. Firstly, CVD graphene exists in the form of large area, continuous, two-dimensional thin films or sheets, whereas graphene oxide exists as a particulate or a powder which is clearly three-dimensional. Comparing their solubility in liquids, CVD graphene is hydrophobic, which means that it's not disposable in liquids. On the other hand, graphene oxide is hydrophilic, which means that it can be dispersed in liquids. Looking at their defect densities and graphene layer structures, CVD graphene is generally low defect, single layer graphene, whereas graphene oxide is generally high defect, few layer graphene, simply because of the presence of oxygen functional groups along with the carbon atoms. It is worth noting that CVD graphene is available in both monolayer and multilayer graphene configurations, whereas graphene oxide is almost always restricted to a multilayer graphene configuration. It is also possible to precisely control the number of graphene layers grown with CVD graphene, but very difficult to accomplish the same thing with graphene oxide. Comparing the electrical properties, we see that CVD graphene generally has great electrical properties because of its high electrical conductivity and high electron mobility. 
relative to CVD graphene, graphene oxide has a lower electrical conductivity and lower electron mobility, which means that relatively speaking, it has poor electrical properties. Their electrical properties, along with some of the other differences that we've discussed so far, play directly into the applications where these materials are being used. CVD graphene has a wide application potential in sensors because of its great electrical properties. Contrastingly, graphene oxide is widely used as an additive material due to its three-dimensional powder form factor. Within sensors, CVD graphene has been used to develop biosensors and sensors that can detect things like pressure, gas concentrations, and magnetic fields. Each of these sensors operate at increased sensitivity levels compared to substitute materials. And using graphene, they can be developed fairly cost-effectively as well. As an additive material, graphene oxide has been added to materials like concrete, asphalt, and a variety of composites to reinforce their strength and deliver weight reduction benefits. Finally, graphene is popular in the composites world, but it is important to distinguish that CVD graphene is really only applicable to laminate-based composites, whereas graphene oxide, being an additive material, can be used across almost all composites. Recapping the major differences between CVD graphene and graphene oxide, CVD graphene is made using a bottom-up chemical vapor deposition process, whereas graphene oxide is made using a top-down chemical exfoliation process. CVD graphene exists as a large area, two-dimensional thin film or sheet deposited directly on the surface of other materials, whereas graphene oxide exists in the form of small flakes, which are three-dimensional. CVD graphene is available in both monolayer and multilayer configurations, and the graphene layer growth can be controlled very precisely. On the other hand, graphene oxide is only available in a multilayer configuration, and it is very difficult to control the exact number of graphene layers grown. CVD graphene generally has a low defect density, whereas graphene oxide has a higher defect density because of the presence of oxygen functional groups. CVD graphene is hydrophobic, whereas graphene oxide is hydrophilic. And this plays directly into the commercially available forms of these materials, as CVD graphene is only available commercially as a thin film or sheet deposited on other materials, whereas graphene oxide is commercially available as a powder or liquid dispersion. And finally, one last factor influencing the applications of these materials is that graphene oxide has relatively weaker electrical properties compared to CVD graphene. Now that we've run through the differences between CVD graphene and graphene oxide, I will briefly talk about the type of graphene that we are manufacturing. At General Graphene, we do not engage in any graphene oxide manufacturing whatsoever and are solely focused on synthesizing and transferring CVD graphene materials at an industrial scale. Despite this, we get a lot of questions about our graphene, such as how many kilograms of graphene we make, whether our graphene can be bought in liquid form, and if our graphene can be added to paint. Each of these questions are really talking about graphene oxide and do not match what CVD graphene is and how it can be used. By itself, CVD graphene is nearly weightless as it weighs less than a milligram per square meter. And really, the best way to measure it physically is by surface area in terms of square centimeters or square meters. And perhaps most importantly, CVD graphene does not exist as a powder and cannot be dispersed in or added to liquids or paint. Now with that being said, let me give you a flavor of what we currently offer to the graphene world. At General Graphene, we are shifting the needle on the commercialization of CVD graphene and its adoption in real-world commercial applications with our proprietary roll-to-roll -roll production and transfer technologies that have enabled us to achieve true industrial-scale manufacturing. What we offer today is a range of CVD graphene materials in mass volumes that are tailored to perform across a wide range of customer applications and are made cost-effectively at reproducible high qualities. And if you're interested in learning more about CVD graphene or working with our industrial scale CVD graphene today, please feel free to visit our website or contact us by sending us an email or giving us a call.